The Holy Trinity. It is one of the most controversial doctrines of modern day Christianity, and it was one of the biggest controversies in historical Christianity. Uh, it's something that we discuss to this day. Um, since the very beginning, people had disputed the Holy Trinity. How can three possibly be one? It does not logically make any sense. How could Jesus be God and the Son be God? Now, what me many people don't understand about the Trinity is they'll say, how can the Son be the Father and the Father be the Son and the Spirit be the Son and the Spirit be the Father? How can those three... To, it's, it's three with one purpose. It's the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, the Spirit is not the Father. Um, but with this controversy, uh, we go into 1830 when the Book of Mormon was published and it introduced some new realizations of a Godhead. Uh, yet these realizations can only be backed up through Scripture if you interpret the Bible uh, the way um, an LDS member would, or if you read the Book of Mormon, not the Book of Mormon, but the Doctrines and Covenants and Pearl of Great Price. If you've read those and you believe those, then you will deny the Trinity. And in order to be Mormon, in order to accept the Mormon faith, you have to deny the Trinity. Um, However, if you are not LDS and you would like to explain to the Mormon community just how real the Holy Trinity is, I would recommend referring them to the following scriptures. I can assure you that with an open heart and with an open mind, a true believer in Christ, our God, can come to understand why these three are in fact one. Uh, John 17, 5 says, Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. And, and this is synonymous to um, Genesis 1, 26, which states, Then God said, Let's make humans in our image to be like us uh, let's make man in our image to be like us and um, in 1st John 14 7 it says if you had known me you should have known my father also and from henceforth you know him and have seen him 1st uh, John 5 7 says for there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word meaning Jesus and the Holy Spirit and these three are one it doesn't get any more black and white than that um, John 1 1 says in the beginning the word meaning Jesus already existed the word was with God and the word was God and that's a very controversial scripture but if you read it in its context if you read all of uh, first John uh, then the first chapter of John then you can un understand that that's what it's talking about it's talking about a triune God um, John 1, uh, John 1, 14 says, So the Word became human and made His home among us. He was, un he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Romans 9, 5 says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the ancestors, and Christ Himself was an Israelite as far as His human nature is concerned, and He is God, the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Um, so Christ Himself was an Israelite, as far as his human nature was concerned. And he is God. Christ is God. And the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. So if he rules over everything. Well, wait a minute. Doesn't God rule over everything? God the Father, Elohim. So if Jehovah rules over everything, how can God the Father rule over everything? The only plausible answer is if they are in fact one. Colossians 2.9 says, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. And people always say, in regards to the nature of God, they say if God's nature is God, and then Christ's nature is human, you can't have two natures at one time, which is correct. But this scripture plainly teaches, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God, in a human body. So Christ, even as he was on earth, even as he entered into flesh, it was God. And he did have the fullness of God. Uh, so as one can justly, justly conclude from the scriptures, straight from the Bible, the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are in fact one. Um, I, I would like to go back to John uh, 17, 5, the first scripture I quote. It says, Now, Father, I'm sorry, um, Genesis 1, which states, Then God said, Let's make <clears throat> human beings in our image to be like us. Well, the scripture actually reads, um, let's make man in our image uh, to be like us. Uh, and, and when people think of the word image, they say image. Well, if we're in the image of God, 
then that means that we look like God. So God, and from the LDS perspective, is a, is a body of flesh and bone. God has skin, he has bones, he has blood, he has testicles, he has everything in the flesh, which makes no sense. Um, but if you look at it, plants have an image. Animals have an image. Are they made in the image of God? No, they're not. Our image is what separates us from the rest of creation. We are special and unique because we are, we have spirit. We are made in spirit. As we know, God is spirit. And we have a spirit. That That's the similarity between when, when he says, and God, uh, I'm sorry, and let's make man in our image to be like us. Image defined in that scripture is spirit. Let's give man a spirit to be like us. That's what separates us from the rest of creation. That's why we blush. That's why we have a conscience. That's why we have a will. Uh, that's why we continue to better ourselves every single day. Most of us do anyway. Um, so I just wanted to elaborate on that scripture. Uh, if you watched all the way through, I appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you. God bless.